thank you very much for joining this uh, panel. Thank you. Thank you, Greta, for introduction and hosting us here today. I think that we only have 30 minutes, so we have to be very straight to the point. And uh, I would like just to suggest that we introduce ourselves. Daniel, we start with you. Uh, just take a microphone, please. Sure. Um, <coughs> Daniel Dears, I'm based in Zug. Uh, I'm pretty a tech geek, but I love uh, also like what happens with Bitcoin now around the banks, uh, institutionalization, adoption. So this is something I'm very passionate about. And I'm also a big fan of the metaverse, and I hope we're going to oh, we'll cover have, it, have, yes. a, have a little <laughs> coverage of that. Thanks. Pascal, please. Pascal is my name. Um, I'm pretty deep into crypto, so to say. So uh, the whole coins, tokens, crypto assets. Uh, I do consulting for banks. I have my own company, which I do research and content also on these type of topics. And uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Guido schmitz Kummerer. I'm a professional legal rebel, and uh, I think I'm an idea nerd, and I have absolutely no idea about technology in detail, but I still think I can contribute to anybody who needs me. Definitely. And uh, I know, Guido, because we just hold a one-week event in Davos, we survived the next bar one week. And we had uh, also Reto, <laughs> and we also, Katia also was, uh, you were also moderating, so it was great. And uh, uh, we called Crypto 2030, where we discussed lots of topic, and uh, it's um, actually a continuation of discussions right now. Um, I would like to disclaim that we don't give any investment advice, but we will talk about interest in investing in crypto and uh, I would like to raise this question uh, and first uh, maybe oh I forgot to introduce myself because I'm very uh, feeling like pressure with the time so my name is Ekaterina Anthony I'm board member of Crypto Valley Association based in Zug and running a company called Smart Compliance helping startups with uh, being regulate, regulatory uh, accepted and uh, work in the right environment. So let's start with uh, crypto versus DeFi. Yes, uh, what are the trends? Because we, we see that winter is over. Everyone is now again interested in, in crypto. Banks are very active. We see ETFs and you working with a company which uh, issue ETPs, right? So maybe just let's talk about regulated crypto five minutes. Just give you perspectives what's going on. And then uh, DeFi, uh, if it's truly DeFi or we see problems now, and what's the uh, connection between real top 20 tokens which we trade on centralized exchanges and DeFi? Let's start with, with you, Daniel. Okay, I mean the ba banker's perspective on this is clear, right? They only will offer something to their clients if it is regulated. And um, I think with crypto, we are there. Um, but if you compare it where we could be, we're still very, very early days. So I think Switzerland, there's maybe five, six, seven banks that are now offering it. Um, our, our largest bank, UBS, is still very slow, very reluctant to do it. And abroad, it's not much better. I think globally, JP Morgan is, you can fairly say, the strongest bank that has invested most in, in crypto, even though sometimes they made different statements publicly. But I would say we're still somewhere in, in the low single-digit percentages of what banks are doing with crypto. Um, I've done such projects myself. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a former strategy consultant. And for example, Merki Baumann, uh, five, six years ago, I, I helped them with that strategy. They were basically one of the first. I think there was Falcon before, but they were the first ones to really there to go and then quickly afterwards Julius Bear followed. I know others. who was the work there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But for them, uh, and there was just this big party last week, I mean it was a huge success. I mean a financial success. So they're making money with that. And unfortunately a lot of other banks haven't gotten it yet. In, Ger in Germany it was very slow and then suddenly Step by step, Stuttgart Börse picked it up, uh, Börse, uh, the Deutsche Börse, um, first banks. So I think the banks will be the drivers of, of the, the price also. I mean, just to give you a perspective, right now, uh, I would say, yeah, we're still in the low di single digits. The, the Bitcoin capitalization is, is, a, is a mere trillion. That's not a lot, right? So if, let's say, 20% or 10% of all global banks would be offering crypto services, in the, probably the affluent 
and high net worth, ultra high net worth space. I don't necessarily think it's maybe the perfect thing for, for mass retail. But if they would do that, we would, we would be in the range of probably six, seven, eight trillion volume, right? Market cap. Mm -hmm. Just cheer by adoption because it's adoption that drives it. And on top, you pile the ETFs and you pile up ETPs. But for us as an ETP provider at FICAS, uh, we can only do what the regulators allow us. So we had to have discussions with six. Which token can, which coin can we actually put into our product? Yes, no, and we, everything added to be audited. So there's not not much creativity and, and stuff you can try out if the regulators don't go along. So, so what you're saying that uh, we still don't see excitement with the banks, so we can really choose the products and invest in like a traditional market. Pascal, I know that you advise some banks with the products, and you know a lot about projects in uh, uh, crypto space. So, what's your perspective on the investment? this year, what advice in terms of the where to go, right? Which direction to go yeah, you can give? Where, yeah, where to go. I mean, maybe what I've been experiencing, you know, I uh, I can say this, I only just started for Murky Bauman, which was maybe two or three, five months uh, ago, you know, and then they brought me on to broaden the investment pers uh, universe that they have because they feel like, okay, now that more banks are coming online, they need to differentiate themselves, you know, you cannot just have like the top five tokens or so, you need to be more diverse you know and and that's obviously what I really liked because I do a lot of research I like privately you know but then what I kind of uh, bumped into was really the problem that um, <laughs> you want to bring on interesting projects but then you uh, bump into the problem with regulation you know and is it a security token is it not and and this is kind of like the the problem that we're at right now I feel like that um, we can also see it that we moved into this phase now again with the Bitcoin price like pump Pumping up, you know, that we are a little bit from fundamentals to pumpamentals, you know, and then you have to kind of think about, okay, what can pump next, uh, regardless of fundamentals, and then you might want to bring it on, and then you feel like, okay, there's not even a use case, how can I feel good uh, exposing this uh, to my clients, you know, and so this is where we are at right now, like really, uh, you in the end, as an investment manager also, you want to make money for your clients, you know, because that's your number one goal, but then at the same time, if it's all about, as I said, pumpamentals and you, you don't really know how sustainable this is, this really puts you in a, in a tough spot, you know, and that's where we're trying to find now, is there like, uh, maybe areas where there are fundamentals, but also fundamentals, and and maybe one thing I can just come up with is that what I'm experiencing is the whole B Bitcoin thing. You know that now with the ETF, Bitcoin is really on fire, but then also the the extended ecosystem. We've seen it with ordinals. We see it now with Bitcoin DeFi, like many different protocols building on on Bitcoin, which might be if you zoom out a little more sustainable. And that's where I think also DeFi is going to be big, and that's why uh, we're focus on, focusing on this so when we talk about sustainability do you see really uh, hype will happen or we will have more mature market now i think th we have not passed the winter the winter is uh, just maybe a day because everybody is looking to the uh, exchange cause of bitcoin and says oh it's going up winter is over it's going down this i've seen so many times uh, uh, already i think even worse, I think it could be an ice time coming for us uh, in, in front of us because at least we are not weaponed, we are not have the, the base we wanted to achieve. And I'm not talking about some people in industrialized countries who have some bitcoins in their uh, wallet because this is not the blockchain ecosystem. This is just trading, this is just money keeping. What we have to achieve is that people use the cryptocurrencies on applications to do something for their daily life and that they really interact. And this is, I don't see it really in a, in a, in a broad way, in a broad movement here in, in Europe. So I'm hoping that in Africa or wherever, in, in South America or Asia, we now get a wave where people really use cryptocurrencies in their wallet for their daily things and not just keep them and wait that the cost is going up or down, that somebody is pumping it or, or not. And here we failed in our, in our industrial area to really push our interest on blockchain technology uh, forward. So I think the next phase, 
The next phase, we are talking about regulatory. I'm preparing all the projects where I'm in to an even worse regulatory setup because I think we have to decentralize ourselves so any activity, digital nomads, uh, the uh, networks, decentralized networks, decentralized platforms, we have now to build up to bridge the phase where regulatories will even more and again and again pushing our ecosystem and where they try to do everything which has substantial loss of control by governments and by institutions to, uh, to regain it. So they don't take care if somebody holds some bitcoins in their uh, bank account and this is nice and they do maybe some, some extras on it. But the other fight is still in front of us. And so I'm really looking um, quite critical to this face and say there we have to do more to prepare ourselves to bridge this face. If we manage it, then our future is bright and then we have really a summer in, in blockchain technology and in the currencies. Let me, uh, because this is Crypto Mountain, right? Um, <clears throat> let me give a, a, a different alternative, right? Um, I'm not 100% sure if I look 10, 15 years ahead if Bitcoin, crypto, maybe even DeFi is really for us, like the humans, whether in Africa, nor in Japan, or I don't know where. Um, if you look at what's happening in the smart city space, um, we have a huge challenge ahead. Um, the latest numbers is by 2050, there will be 10 billion people on the planet. Today, we're eight. What's interesting about today's eight is that about half of them live on the countryside. So they're farmers. Um, in 2050, it will be 78% living in cities. So basically, the two billion that are going to be added in the coming decades is exclusively in cities. So that's why all the governments around the world are, have to redefine how their cities run, how they operate, because in those cities, two billion people will be coming on top. Uh, and then, and this is with my company, if you want to know if you write the name of my company correct, you just have to say it quickly. So Slugger is unfortunately wrong. <laughs> it's, it should be Singular, S-N-G-L-R. So it's Singular, S-N-G-L-R. We have a VC fund where we invest in smart cities. So it's a topic that's very dear to us. We work on smart city projects uh, in the Middle East. And, and if you think drones, drone deliveries in, in, I'm not talking about small cities, it's not about Zug, Switzerland doing drone delivery. Think of a Sao Paulo, think of Shenzhen, think of uh, Mumbai. When you add drone delivery into these cities, um, even traffic systems go to EV, autonomous cars. The challenge is going to be huge and it's going to be a challenge of data and then you will have you will need some form of blockchain tokens or cryptocurrencies also as a means of payment. So drones, when they run out of battery, they have to go to a charging station. At the charging station, ideally, there will be a transaction happening. That's not going to happen on a Visa, MasterCard. And, and you know, it, the most logical thing to do it on is on a cryptocurrency or on a token-based system. And I think that is, if you really look 10, 15 years ahead, and, and then you imagine how many drones will be flying around on the whole planet. Uh, so that will probably, so the machine-to-machine -machine transactions will by far, by far outweigh the little stuff that we humans do. You know, I buy some cryptos here and some there. That's, that's just an alternative vision. Maybe I'm wrong. No, you're, we are not disagreeing. I'm talking just about an extended crypto winter according to regulatory and everything for the next five years. And then I say, if we manage and do our homework, what you also described, then we can have at least a, a, a crypto summer afterwards. Okay, let's move to DeFi. Then, uh, do you see like uh, DeFi, uh, it's, uh, it's already time of mainstream adoption. So, do we really have now uh, DeFi as an adopted element? Because we uh, just discussed that there is a difficulty to uh, sometimes to de um, distinguish between a real DeFi project and DeFi, which is actually a regulated project. So, in this, uh, where are we going in this direction? Do we really have this uh, truly DeFi, decentralized, uh, projects and uh, what what can be the direction gaming i don't know education uh, tokenization of real uh, real assets uh, just give a bit of uh, your overview uh, what will be defined where we need to look at if we want to invest in in 2024 Maybe yeah, quickly I can start. Yeah, the DeFi topic, I mean, it really depends on what you define as DeFi. You know, I don't really like this uh, term at all because it's so much of what is called DeFi is not DeFi at all. So I'd rather call it just on-chain finance. You know, there's something happening on a blockchain. 
and they might be uh, closer to reality. But I think, you know, the problem is, um, yeah, when I was traveling around for the last two years, I was going to these uh, Global South and other countries, and there, for example, stablecoin adoption is huge, you know, especially in Paraguay, uh, Colombia, Argentina, like compared to where we are. It's still also magnitudes, uh, it can still grow, but it's still, I was able at the end, I only did my payments uh, through stablecoins, you know, but obviously most of the stablecoins were uh, US Tether, which is backed uh, obviously via fiat, you know, and then it was on Tron, you know, which is maybe a blockchain that we all would say, okay, might not be the decentralized uh, blockchain of all of them. So I think that's kind of like the problem that where we still are, you know, I think uh, we still are missing these infrastructure products, I would say, to have like real DeFi use cases. There are other things, uh, people who are trying to build this, um, but uh, I think we're just not there yet. Um, and, and that's why I think that the mainstream adoption of DeFi is nowhere near where it might be at, at some point in the future, yeah. I think also also here we have to, to face that at least um, the out of my um, um, way I, uh, I saw it and I, I acknowledge it, that DeFi projects are going more and more backwards because they all said we cannot do something else like be more centralized, more regulated, because there is no alternative to regulation. I always don't like and somebody tells me there's no alternative to something, because this normally pushes me to say, no, let's think about it. And let's be provocative. I can send weapons to Iran if I do it the right way, but we say we are not able to make decentralized financial systems on our planet because some regulatory body says it's not possible. So let's think the situation is, if we describe the situation, yes, DeFi projects are going more and more backwards. Everybody says, oh, in the markets, US, Europe, and where we are located, we, we cannot do more, so we have to go away from that. No, the world is a, bit, a little bit bigger than the uh, six, seven hundred million living in US and in Europe. And uh, there is a lot of people like, like we have seen in Africa, in, uh, in what somebody talked about, Maasai, uh, uh, the, the villages and stuff like this. Cardano did payment systems in North Kenya and, and things like this. There are a lot of things where, which can take up, but we have to focus on it. We have to go for it and we have to invest there and take there our communities. And there are huge communities for, for DeFi setups and then we get power. Good, sorry. I, I just want to move uh, to the metaverse because we have 10 minutes left. And uh, according to uh, Blooming Intelligence, we will have 800 billion market value in metaverse by the end of this year. And my question is, uh, actually, metaverse depends heavily on technology and uh, I guess you, you, our favorite AI, right, at the moment. And do we really have enough technologies to mass adoption? Why it's not happening faster than it it's probably should be? And uh, what is the... Uh, and also, for me, it's a bit scary, you know, when I think about all these developments, that we're going into this um, artificial reality. And uh, also, when I think about children and uh, how they spend time now not talking to each other, but getting into this. So give your perspectives on uh, these developments and uh, do we need to look at uh, these investments as well? Yeah, so <clears throat> I, I, I share your, let's say, surprise that it's not adopting fast, but I think this is going to take another five or plus years. It's not something fast. The, the closest analogy is probably to artificial intelligence. I mean, in 1999, I was having an AI startup and the whole world thought AI is the next big thing. And it wasn't. It took, took another 20, 30 years for it to really come alive. I don't think we need to wait 20 years for, for Metaverse, but definitely it's not happening this year and it's not happening next year. And all the stuff we see, Apple Vision Pro, um, First Worlds like Sandbox and Decentraland, I mean, this is really the early, 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 early days of the metaverse. And I think it needs, and, and I, I don't like what journalists are doing currently. They're almost like writing it off already. Like, oh, it was a huge hype. We all wrote about it. Now it's dead. Let's write about AI because the metaverse is dead. But I mean, virtual worlds are, are already here and they're going to become attractive. And you know what Apple does, right? Every new gadget they release is going to be better than the previous one. So when we reach the Apple Vision Pro, five or seven or 11, 
it's going to be so nice uh, for us to wear and so convenient. And maybe the glasses that I'm wearing here will have a little built-in uh, monitor that I can just switch on and off with maybe a little twink with my eyelashes. And I can just you know identify stuff or it can tell me who is in front of me. Is this a person I already met before? And, and what's the name of, of, uh, of her husband, etc. So it's, it's all these kind of value that's going to be created through that technology, but it's going to take time. And the early adoption that we now see in the fashion luxury industry, etc., it's great, but it's just a very first step. I've been in industrial metaverse recently on two, two events, and you would be surprised how much is already happening in the industrial world, because they already work with 3D modeling and stuff. And um, So it's, it's going to be huge, but it's going to take time is my message. And I also want to invite everyone who's interested. We have, a, again, a Swiss metaverse association, like we have a Crypto Valley Association and other associations. Um, if you're interested, look into this. We are now about 70, 80 members. And I've never seen, seriously, I've never seen, this is very t a techy thing, right? I've never seen such a diversity in membership. I mean, we have Weisse Arena Locks, we have the Gurten Festival, we have high-end luxury brands in there, we have the Swiss Football League, we have the Association of Police Employees. I mean, it's mind-boggling. Of course, we have the banks and we have a big, some big corporates, but I mean, the diversity is so big, it shows that there's, this is bigger, this is gonna be bigger than crypto, this is gonna be bigger than blockchain, the metaverse is gonna bring it all together blockchain, DeFi, it's going to be so many elements in it, and of course AI as well. And when we talked before about you know data, I mean the metaverse is the big data production engine because it's all digital and you can all store, archive it, you can mine it, you can do a lot with that data. That's going to be, as it was said before, gold. So the metaverse for someone who likes the data is gold narrative, you're going to become a big friend of the metaverse because it's all there. And you can, you will not, analyze it yourselves, but you'll have AI analyze it. So we're just at the beginning. And uh, Pascal, but you work with a lot of projects. Uh, so maybe you can give us some examples or which are uh, the trends. Uh, what are the, t the trendy one now in this direction? <laughs> well, in terms of metaverse, I'd say that's exactly the trend has kind of also died down in recent uh, months, I would say. You know, it's it's moved more to obviously AI and, and, and these kind of things. So I, I also haven't really dug that deep into where, where it's now going. But I think that the thing is, I would agree with, with Daniel, you know, that uh, we are really not there yet, not even in a centralized uh, establishment, you know, because like if the metaverse, if I want to use something which is called the metaverse today, it's so not immersive enough, you know, and then I feel like, okay, maybe it's a cool gimmick to want to try out, but then I would not uh, do this on a regular basis because it doesn't offer me any benefits you know and that's probably because of technology I'm, I'm not a technologist but I think uh, there are so many missing parts that we can really make this immersive you know I still think and, and that's why I would never give up on the connection between blockchain and metaverse because at the end I I am also really rooting for decentralization as I think everyone in here is you know and I think if I also like uh, look into the future I hope that there will be an interconnection and that blockchain will help to make it sort of decentralized because otherwise it's just kind of I only see dystopia for me you know and that's why I still stay interested but at the moment I think um, yeah it's, it's it's not something that I'm really focused on if I jump up to what you said Daniel about the population development and how many people will live in cities it's a clear trend that out of different angles and approaches people should be separated and isolated and there will be a lot of people who will sit at home they have no uh, not so much social connections they will stay there and they will all jump on this big uh, mega business model metaverse because you can do a lot of things there and some people will be pushed in because now I have already to register for my hotel online before because the check-in is only there for four hours in future I have to go to the metaverse to check in there that I get my real room but um, so there is a big huge business coming up but first Metaverse, nobody is, is talking and thinking about also the negative aspects, the risk in it, and this makes this model also vulnerable because uh, there will be a lot of negative aspects for our social, for our communities and our humans. And I have to say, very personal, I have no time for Metaverse. My real world meeting 
super people like you having here the interaction, doing the project is taking all of my time and if I have free time then I go for tennis and anything else so I'm not interested in so I'm not a customer of it but I have to face it like AI also Metaverse will be a huge uh, business model and even if the journalist writing it up and down this is a normal thing one day up one day down but no trend and no real movement has been stopped by some sorry by some journalists writing something off or off the people will will take it because they want and they have okay so i when i listen to you guys it's everything in the future you know it will it will but we're already here and we we you know we have a lot of opportunities and uh, um, real cases uh, with uh, products listed ET, etfs uh, we, and tokenization come on tokenization is booming right we now can tokenize everything and uh, present it as investment uh, product or uh, for private equity it's easy to collect money using this technology Technology. But also, we need to cover NFT, sorry. <laughs> I need to ask you about this, because it was in our agenda. So, uh, Gideon, I start with you. Uh, NFT, are we already in a mature market, which is more, not so, like, uh, booming when you easily can get uh, a thousand times more money and uh, then nobody understands why people pay so for so, some, uh, some avatars. But where we are and uh, what will be the 2024? for NFT market? NFTs are just, in my opinion, a tool which is part of the whole uh, setup and uh, um, if the trend and the, all the um, um, uh, enthusiasm is over, it will be reduced to it, so it's an important tool for, for the technology, but at least not more. So it will have a place, but not a trend. But, but how about art, you know, how about uh, this uh, sector? Art will come back to physical uh, art together with NFT. So the topic that I buy, any small digital pictures are there. It's a trend, it's a niche market, but at least uh, art, I want to have it in my, my place also physically or with a screen. So there will be a market for it, but it's not, not a game changer. It's not nothing which is so huge that you really can say I have to invest in it. I'd like to offer a slightly maybe different alternative perspective on this. <laughs> I see uh, that's why we love each other. I see Annika is here. I mean, we, we, had a, we had a blast in summer at Art Basel with so many cool people coming. We had a young artist from Mexico, um, uh, Ibrahim Yahel, and I, I disagree. I think the old classic art world doesn't feel threatened or challenged by this phenomenon of NFT art at all, uh, unless there's an auction where someone buys 69 million for, for some you know, funny JPEG. And Christus and Sorbus, they, <coughs> so they just started uh, yeah. several years. They really do NFTs. Yeah, but I think you know there's always a market, and the market's maybe not going to be us, but it's going to be the younger generation. It's going to be people with different lifestyles, digital nomads, if, I'm a, if I love art. And I'm a digital nomad. What do I do? I carry around my oil in, of, uh, on canvas uh, paintings, and and you know how li many live already a very digital lifestyle. I can carry my art with me around the world. Where even in a, maybe in a plane, I'll have a little display and I just flash it on. Um, I as a, as a tech geek, I love that. I love the idea. I was in digital art in 2001. There was an exhibition in in Basel. It was embarrassing. I, it was the Swiss or International Digital Art Festival or something, and I thought it's going to be huge. It's going to be in the same premises where Art Basel is. It was in the foyer of the Basel Theater, which is very beautiful, but it's just a foyer of a theater. There were max 300 people there, and a lot of no-name artists and no collectors, and just probably collector uh, artists looking at other artists' projects. It was, it was really sad, and I think now we're already way ahead, but maybe in 10 or 20 years, no. And you can always do both. You can always collect all on canvas. You can collect other things. But I think there's going to be a huge market for that. And it's going to be the younger one, the digital nomads, people that just like tech and want to have their Picasso on their mobile phone and carry it with him. Or then you have uh, you know, the glasses. You can look around. If I wanted to, I could pour, if I had now really cool glasses here, I could port, you know, portray my favorite NFT art here while I'm talking to you just to make me more confident and give me some pleasure and enjoyment. Why not? It's probably all going to be very easy. I just you know, code, code it accordingly. So I see a big market for that, but it's going to take a few years. 
Yeah, maybe maybe just quickly from my perspective, I also think like NFTs to me, it's it's really like tokenizing culture. You know, that's what I see. We have these all these online communities today. You know, uh, on Instagram on all the social platforms, and now you see the same happening with these NFT like cultures where you have the board ape guys, you know, and then they commingle and they and they kind of get together in the real world. So I think that's really what it is about. It's tokenizing culture, and then it's also important then for companies to look at it. You know, because that's like uh, brands for that. that that you can post potentially like uh, tap into. So that is uh, thinking uh, something which is huge. Then you go maybe in that kind of aspect. Yeah, it's a technology and not something an NFT, which is something as an asset, you know, and it's more maybe also what I'm seeing. What I always found interesting is this uh, connection through the real world, you know, digital and real with the NFC technology that's now coming that you can hook up jerseys of soccer players um, with an NFT. And that way it becomes immersive. And I think that's that's where NFT surely has a, a spot to play. So yeah. Anik would like to comment. Can I add something on this? Because um, I always love to look at things from a macroeconomic perspective and from a societal view. And um, we launch our NFTs in the very winter of crypto on the 29th of November in 22. And it could have, couldn't have been worse the market, but what, what NFTs to me, um, already a year before, where it's just a technology and it's another ecosystem where things happen. And now I feel what's happening, we launched together, it's almost a new ecosystem, it's meeting, the platform is Discord, it's a lot of communities, and even if it goes away from the art, there are actually these communities now often pivot into something that has real world application. So people meet in another space, super inspiring uh, teams in a new way creating together that you have uh, people in Asia all of a sudden don't have to work in a street kitchen anymore but have jobs that didn't exist before. And um, it, to me, it's, it's a, it, there's a world opening up that didn't exist before that creates things that over time mature and move into something real world. And the people who are just in the, for the money, they're, they're gone anyways. And uh, it's, it's, um, for me, it's, a, it's one part of the new world that's evolving where people meet and create um, for, the, for the decentralized system. Basically, and, and it's it's a bottom-up, it's a, a different culture, very different culture. Your your uh, NFT holders are your shareholders. They are your co-creators. They um, they are your artists. So it, it's all merging into a new way of, of of doing economy. It seems to me, and that's beautiful. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But the, it's still a very static technology, and I think if you look f five th ten years ahead. Uh, NFTs will be uh, exchanged against something else, which is even more fancy and 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 uh, doing the same job. It's for me a job what the NFT is doing, and it's a, a kind of a kind of leisure NFT is doing. But it's not for me something where I say this is now a global supermarket um, where uh, the billions of uh, of funds will be invested in the next years in small artist uh, art uh, art things. I think other topics. Like AI, like the the, the new uh, blockchain technologies, uh, like a lot of other things, will will um, at least guide this economy. So, shall we just maybe conclude? Do you have any questions? Uh, I find the discussion quite interesting. Um, I would like to broaden the um, the definition of uh, NFT. Uh, so, you just talk about the uh, NFT, maybe a tokenized of art. I would say um, I would broaden it to token. So we have a very hot topic in the world economic form is tokenized real world asset. Like for example, my own company, we tokenize the patent or the user right of the videos. We tokenize the 20 years profit that we can earn by broadcasting the videos, right? So I think token can be used in a much broader way than just art. Um, yeah, this, actually I would like to express this opinion, yes. Okay. Also NF NFTs are uh, for ownership and for identification, for for uh, giving a connection between the real world and the artificial world. This is a huge. It's a huge um, uh, application. It's a tool. I said it's not. It's a, and mainly NFTs are tools which we need in this whole ecosystem. And we have some niche parts with art, with other things, uh, with avatars. But the main thing is at least uh, to a documentation. And there I don't believe that the code which we have now will be the technology in, uh, technology in five or six years. There will be something else replacing it. I, I, I see that Leto wants us to finish. So let me just conclude. 
we uh, we still in winter according to Guido. Uh, even uh, it's icy, <laughs> icy winter, yeah. And uh, according to Pascal, we can uh, actually rely on the bullying market. We don't need to do a lot at the moment, right? Uh, the market is just uh, going up anyway. And uh, when it will stop going up, then it will be a lot of work for you, yes, to understand how to help banks to produce good products. And um, uh, Daniel, maybe you summarize uh, your statements. Uh, what, what, what is your message to everyone? Just uh, because you also talk about this uh, smart city, and I, I just maybe want you to give a last uh, final words. The future is bright, and it's going to be exponential. And tech. drones, yes, drones. Drones, AI, quantum computing. So in a lot of more tech coming where, where okay, we come from. So, so, guys, thank you very much. You, you did a great job. Very, we had very brief but deep discussion. <laughs>